first things first, welcome everyone um, to this convention that's hosted by CCR and YIP. This has been sort of a multi-month uh, project that we embarked on. And we, from the very beginning, we're really quite excited about this event. Um, what we're trying to do is um, really come together and think critically about the intersection of social media and politics and do so in a way that invites uh, multiple parties and different kinds of stakeholders uh, to come together to think critically and find solutions to make social media a more positive force in politics. So the different kinds of stakeholders that we, uh, we brought together include academics that study social media. Uh, we have social media influencers such as Afra and Jen that uh, Carlos mentioned briefly earlier. And then the third group of stakeholders is in fact you guys. Uh, we all use social media, and especially as uh, a part of, I think I, I, I still get to claim to be a part of the younger generation, um, but as part of a generation of folk who have grown up with the internet and with social media, um, I think we're especially well positioned to, to be thinking about these issues and to be uh, the ones who are actively seeking solutions. So. A little bit about the title of this policy thon. Uh, the title of this policy thon is The Promises and Perils of Hashtag Politics. Uh, my goal here will simply be to unpack this title a little bit, give an overview of the topics that will come, uh, come up over the next two days, and sort of get the gears turning in our thinking about these issues. So, in recent years, I think it's safe to say that the focal point of discussion on social media politics has really been its dangers, threats, and what we're calling its perils. During COVID-19, the specter of a new form of authoritarianism powered by the latest technological developments in machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data science, known to some as digital authoritarianism, rose to public consciousness as governments around the world started implementing complex contact tracing technologies as part of its public health measures. Against a background of events that included China's deployment of facial recognition and social crediting technologies to suppress dissent, and before that, if you remember Edward Snowden's watershed revelations uh, concerning the, uh, the US's illegal domestic and international data harvesting practices, the public's readiness to acquiesce to contact tracing technology suggested itself to some, including myself, as a signal of its readiness to trade individual private rights to privacy for other goods, such as convenience and safety. But this is just one of the many worrying things about social media and politics today. Uh, turning further back, we might recall a time when public discourse was focused primarily on issues that had risen to salience as a result of the 2016 US elections. These issues, which are as serious today as ever, have become quite familiar to us. Fake news, echo chambers, data profiteering, powerful rabbit hole algorithms that breed, uh, breed online extremism, novel security vulnerabilities introduced by the reliance in elections on social media and digitally in integrated infrastructure, and so on and so forth. As a result of this migration of political discourse into these online spaces, citizens and democracies all over the world are today more polarized than ever. This includes not just the US, but everywhere from India to Bulgaria, to Norway, to Denmark, to the UK. Uh, events such as Brexit, the election of Donald Trump are all testimonies to this fact. And as events such as Pizzagate, or to take a slightly larger scale and much more ominous example, uh, the Myanmar military's utilization of Facebook for purposes of genocide. These events remind us that the world in which we live today can no longer be clearly divided into the online and the offline. A Facebook post can incite a riot and power today rests as much in the political office as it is in the Twitter handle. The incredible speed of these developments is the result of a self-accelerating cycle that has been constitutive of the big tech's uh, commercial success over the past two decades. In this cycle, technological de developments grow their mother companies and the mother companies grow their tech. Proprietary technologies with profound socio-political consequences 
are thus withheld from public scrutiny thanks to intellectual property laws, which function mo moreover as incubators for mono monopolies. As of 2021, four out of the five largest corporations in the world are Silicon Valley tech companies. These include Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet, the mother company of Google. All these companies now have market capitalizations of over 1.4 trillion US dollars. For reference, the GDP of Australia in 2020 was 1.36 trillion US dollars. The significance of this statistic begins to crystallize when we learn to see these companies as immensely powerful interest groups whose interests are primarily aligned with their stake of their shareholders and not necessarily with us, the public. This fact helps us recognize that these companies are interest groups that the public will likely have to fight if it is interested in reaping real change. So the picture of the impact of social media and politics that we obtain by focusing on these developments is pretty darn bleak. But a fuller and I think more realistic perspective will begin to emerge um, as we start considering certain reasons for optimism. Let's think back to the early days where social media was heralded, uh, heralded by political activists as a tool powerful enough to create a better world. The radical increase in connectivity it, for it afforded made possible for individuals to communicate and organize at speeds and on scales that would have been hitherto unimaginable. The use of videos of police brutality on social media reminds us that the increased surveillance by the states is sometimes countered by the increased surveillance of the state. And as uh, Black Lives Matter recently and Occupy Wall Street and the Arab Spring before that remind us, social media harbored and continues to harbor immense potential for progressive democratic resistance and organization. And the promises of social media politics are no more to be underestimated than its perils. So part of the re issue with social media is that many of these transformative developments in, political, in the political, social, and economic landscape took place within the span of a single decade. These are huge groundbreaking changes in the way our economy works, in the way that we relate to one another, in the way that we buy things, in the way that we vote, in the way that we receive our information. The problems we confront, election interference, political polarization, online extremism, digital surveillance, are all symptoms of deep structural issues of economic incentive, intellectual property, and dated policy. In this whirlwind of change, our consciousness, our policy, and our institutions have scarcely had time to get a grip. There's this Great quote by a social by a sociobiologist named E.O. Wilson. Um, and this quote is often used by the digital activist, Tristan Harris, which you may or may not know from the Netflix documentary, uh, The Social De Dilemma, which I would highly recommend any of you guys to watch, even in the process of this policy thought, actually. So the quote that Tristan Harris is fond of using to dramatize the current situation is this. E.O. Wilson writes that the real problem of humanity is that we have paleolithic emotions, medieval institutions, and godlike technology. There's a real mismatch between who we are, what our institutions are like, and what we are now capable of doing. So what this quote helps us see is that realistically, there's only one way we can deal with the problems emerging as a result of the transformative impacts of social media on politics. Human nature can't be changed, and the advance of technology can't be stopped. However, our medieval institution can be changed. Our task, therefore, is to reimagine, rebuild, and update our institutions for this new digital world we inhabit. The old adage, to change the world, you must first change yourself, doesn't actually quite apply in our situation. Indeed, this adage is actually arguably, I think, a piece of corporate ideology similar to reuse, reduce, recycle, which functions simply to shift the locus of responsibility from corporations and from institutions to individuals. What we need is structural change, 
in the form of policy change and lasting political action. What we need is structural change that holds those with real power accountable. And this might sound a little bit grand and, um, and, and overblown, but this is why you're here at this policy con. We want you to learn and think critically about our present age and reimagine our institutions. Over the next two days, our hope is that you will dive into the issues that the present configuration of social media politics, um, into these issues with an eye for realistic and actionable solutions. Hopefully, helpfully, you will be far from alone in the process. You'll be exploring these issues alongside le leading academics who have thought about these, for, these problems for ages, who will share their expertise and their research on these issues. You'll be working alongside politically engaged social media influencers who will share their firsthand experience at the front lines of online public discourse. And lastly, but not leastly, uh, you'll be working alongside inspiring peers who are some of the brightest and most politically conscious young people of today. We received a lot of applications. You guys have all been selected through a careful process, and we're incredibly excited to have you guys here. The goal, once again, is to think critically about these problems that are incredibly pressing um, and to elucidate the possibilities available for us and to find a way forward and out of them together. I'm incredibly excited to meet with all of you and to work with you on these matters over the next two days. I trust that you, uh, you are too. And welcome, good luck, and I guess, enjoy. Yeah.